This lecture is part of an online math course on group theory and will be about outer automorphisms, especially outer automorphisms of symmetric groups. So we'll start by recalling what automorphisms of a group look like. First of all, we have inner automorphisms. Um, the inner automorphisms are automorphisms that take x to g, x, g to the minus 1 for some g in, in the group g. And this is trivial if g is in the center of g. So this just means the center um, because that's just the same as saying x is equal to g, x, g to the minus 1. So g would have to commute with everything. So the group of auto group of inner automorphisms is just the quotient of G by the center of G. And there may or may not be other automorphisms you can't get like this. And the quotient of all automorphisms by inner automorphisms is called the outer automorphism group. So we get an exact sequence. The center of G is contained in G. Um, and this maps to all automorphisms of G. And this maps to the outer automorphisms of G. And this maps onto one. So this quotient here is just the inner automorphisms of G. And what we want to do is to calculate the group of all automorphisms of G. And as, as we generally know what G and its center are, the problem is to find this outer automorphism group. Um, so um, for a simple example, if G is, say, Z over 2Z squared, the group the center of G is equal to G, so the group of inner automorphisms is trivial. But the outer automorphism group of G, which is equal to the automorphism group of G, is equal to all the automorphisms of this group, which is just the symmetric group S3, um, because you can just permute the three non-identity elements. Now, for most groups, the, um, the, the automorphisms of a group G are usually obvious, whatever this means. It means they're usually easy to find. For example, what does obvious mean? Suppose we take the group, the projective special linear group over a finite field. So this means determinant one matrices that are n by n. Projective means you quotient out by the center, and this is the finite field of order Q. And then we have the following obvious automorphisms. We can have inner automorphisms. We can have automorphisms we can conjugate by elements of GLN of FQ. So this includes the inner automorphisms, but it also includes some other automorphisms. For instance, we could conjugate by um, this matrix here, and this might give us a new automorphism. Thirdly, we can have field automorphisms. So if we've got a map from the field Q, field of order Q to the field of order Q, that will give an automorphism of this group. Finally, we can just map G to the um, transpose of its inverse. And you can easily check that that also gives an automorphism of the group. And the full group of automorphisms of this group is generated by these obvious ones. And for most simple groups, something similar happens. You write down the obvious automorphisms you can think of, and that gives all of them. So for the alternating group A, N, the obvious automorphisms is just the group, the symmetric group S, N, which has A, N as a normal subgroup of index 2. So the outer automorphism, um, and for most N, if N is not equal to 6, this gives all automorphisms of a n. So the outer automorphism group of a n is equal to z over 2z for n not equal to 6. a6 is a bit different. 
In this case, we will see that there are some extra automorphisms. In fact, the outer automorphism group of A6 will turn out to be Z over 2Z times Z over 2Z. So this is a very unusual example of an unexpected outer automorphism of a simple group. Um, these outer automorphisms turn up in some of the spradic groups. For example, there's a spradic mature group called M11 acting on 11 points, and the subgroup fixing a point is order 720 and is made up of A6 together with a, a sort of non, one of these non standard outer automorphisms of it. So let's see why A6 has outer automorphisms. Well, it'll be slightly simpler to do outer automorphisms of S6, the, the symmetric group. The symmetric group is a little bit easier to handle than the alternating group. And if you've got an outer automorphism group of S6, that's going to give you an outer automorphism of its normal subgroup. A6, so, so that doesn't really matter. So let's see why S6 has an outer automorphism. Well, we start by observing that S5 has a subgroup of index 6. So this would be order 20 because S5 has order 120. And that's S5, not S6. I'm, I'm working with S5 for the moment. And this subgroup is easy. It's just the Frobenius group of order 20 that we discussed earlier, that it consists of the automorphisms of the finite field of order five of the form X goes to AX plus B, where B is in the field with five elements and A is in the field with five elements and A is not equal to zero. Um, so this group here obviously is order 20 because there are five possibilities here and four possibilities there. Well, if S5 has a subgroup of index six of a group, means the group acts on the set of six cosets of that group. So we get, um, this gives a homomorphism S5 to S6. So S5 acts transitively on a set of six elements. Well, you may think that's not a big deal. It's obvious that S6 contains subgroups S5 because it contains a subgroup S5 fixing a point. But this is a sort of unusual S5 and S6. So this gives an S5 containing S6 not fixing a point. So you see S6 has six obvious subgroups S5 fixing points, but what we're saying is there are some more copies of S5 um, not fixing a point. In fact, S6 has six plus six subgroups S5. Um, normally, Sn, it usually has just n subgroups, um, Sn minus 1. But the group S6 is funny because it contains more of these subgroups than you would expect. Well, in particular, S6 has a transitive S5 subgroup of index six. Now, just as S5 having a subgroup of index six meant that we got a homomorphism from S5 to S6, if we've got a subgroup of index six of S6, this gives a homomorphism from S6 to S6 acting on the six cosets of this subgroup. And if you think about it a bit, you can see this isn't actually an inner automorphism because um, the subgroup fixing a point of this action is one of these funny S5s rather than, rather than an S5 fixing a point. So this gives an abstract argument showing that S6 has an um, outer automorphism. Well, what we would like to do 
is right down an outer automorphism explicitly. So, I mean, the, the trouble with this abstract argument is it's hard to get a picture of what this outer automorphism is actually doing. So let's recall that S6 is generated by five elements of order two, the five transpositions. Satisfying the following relations. Um, first of all, um, each of these elements, if, if I call these A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5, each of them satisfies AI squared is equal to one, and AI AJ squared equals one if I not joined to J, and AI AJ cubed equals one if I is joined to J. Remember, we had this Coxeter diagram giving presentation for S6. And we're going to find an automorphism by finding five other elements, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, with the same relations. So we want B1 squared to have order two and so on. And then we can get a homomorphism of S6 to S6 by mapping AI to BI. So this homomorphism will be given like that. And this homomorphism will not be inner because the BI will not be transpositions. So you recall a transposition just exchanges two elements. And any inner automorphism has to take transpositions to transpositions. So each BI will be of the form, um, it will be a product of three different transpositions. So we should think about what the, the, these elements look like. So if we've got six points and we've got a product of three transpositions, Oops, um, sorry, uh, didn't mean to join those up. Let me start again. If we've got a product of three transpositions, it might do something like this. And if we've got another product of three transpositions, it might be related like that. Alternatively, it might be related like this. So here it might do this, and it might exchange these two and do the same as that. So it might have one transposition in common with the blue one, in which case the others must be arranged somehow like this, or it might have none in common, in which case you can check that they must be arranged like this. And in this case, the product is order three. So the product is order three here and two here. Or of course, the two transpositions might be the same, in which case, so the two elements might be the same, in which case their product just as order one. So what we want to do is to find five of these involutions of this shape um, with the following property, that if, if any, any, any two that are joined by a line in a diagram like this are related like that, and otherwise they're related like that. So let's see if we can do that. So, um, so my first one is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And now my second one um, must be a product of three transpositions, none of which is these ones. So I can try two, three, three, four, sorry, four, five, six, one. Um, the next one must have no transpositions in common with this, but one transposition in common with this. So I could take one, two, so it's in common with that, and then three, five, four, six. The next one must have a transposition in common with each of these, but none in common with these. And by looking around a bit, I can take three, four, which is that one, times six, one, which is that one, times two, five, and now it has nothing in common with that. The final one has to have a transposition for, for, from each of these, 
and none in common with that. So I can take one, two, four, five, six, three. And now I can write down my explicit automorphism of S6. I'm going to take what transposition one, two to here, two, three to here, three, four to here, four, five to here, and five, six to here. So this is an explicit outer automorphism of, um, of, 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 of the group S3. Um, if you want, you can, you can draw little pictures of these. Um, so if I do my six points like this, then I'm going to color all the um, transpositions. So I might call, um, let's number these, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the yellow one is going to look like this. Um, but its image will look like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So its image looks like this. And then two, three might um, be this one here. So two, three looks like that. And its image here will be the um, operation that takes two to three, four to five, and six to one. So um, we go on like this, three, four, looks like this, and it goes one, two, three, five, four, six. Next one exchanges four and five and goes to three, four, six, one, two, five. And the final one, if I can find the missing color, there it is exchanges five and six and exchanges one and two, four and five, six and three. So what this means is the transposition exchanging these two is mapped under the outer automorphism to the element exchanging these two, these two and these two. So this is an actual picture of an outer automorphism of S6. Um, well, now you can ask, do other symmetric groups have other outer automorphisms? And the answer is no, they don't. So let's look at the automorphism group of S6, sorry, not of S6, of Sn for other values of n. And first of all, we can notice that, um, suppose we have an outer automorphism sigma. So suppose sigma takes transpositions to transpositions. Then sigma is inner. And the idea is we can reconstruct the points from transpositions. We can reconstruct the endpoints from the transpositions at least if n is not equal to 3. We can do it if n equals 3 as well, but that takes a bit more, more work. And you see this as follows. Suppose we've got these n points here, wherever they are. What you can do is you can look at all the transpositions fixing one point. And this is a cluster of n minus 1 transpositions such that the product of any two has order three. And if you think about it a bit, you'll see that the only way to get a product of n minus one transposition such that the product of any two is order three is to either pick a point like this and join it to all the others, or if n equals three, you can, you, you, you can do this. So n equals 3 is a bit of a special case. So it doesn't quite work for n equals 3. Um, so if n is not equal 3, you can reconstruct the points by knowing the transpositions. So any automorphism that takes transpositions to transpositions also acts on the points, on the n points that S n s acts on and must therefore be an automorphism of S n. So the question is, are there 
automorphisms that don't preserve transpositions. So automorphisms not preserving transpositions. You remember the outer automorphism we found for S6 did not preserve transpositions because it took each transposition to a product of three transpositions. Well, let's, let's take a look at what the um, other automorphisms, the other involutions look like. So let's look at S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and S6. And we can ask how many transpositions are there? Well, the number of transpositions is n, n minus 1 over 2. So the number is going to be 0, 1, 3, um, 6, 10, 15, 21, and 28. What about products of two transpositions? Well, here the number is n, n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, because we can pick these four points. But then we've got to divide by 2 times 2 times 2 factorial, because we can swap each pair of points and permute these. So the number of these we get is um, there are none here. Um, there are none here. There are 3 for S4, 15 for S5, 45, 105, 210. Um, what about products of three transpositions? So again, we to n minus 1 up to n minus 5, and we divide it by 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 factorial. And the number we get is 0, 0, 0, 0 until we get to 6. And then we have 15 here, 105. And then we get uh, some large number, 420, I believe. And now you notice... We have this funny fact that the number of transpositions is the same as the number of this sort of involution. And obviously, if an automorph automorphism takes transpositions to some other conjugacy class, these conjugacy classes must have the same number of elements. And this happens for S6. On the other hand, if we take more transpositions and ask how many there are. Well, we just get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 105. And you see S8, there's no other conjugacy class of 28 transpositions. So there are no outer automorphisms of S8. And similarly for S7 or S5 or S4 or S3. S6 is the outer automorphism of S6 depends on this funny coincidence that um, these two numbers are the same. And the point is, these numbers are always bigger than n times n minus 1 over 2 if n is greater than 6. Um, that's quite easy to check because we've just got this formula for it. You can see that the number of them grows until it reaches some point, and then it starts decreasing again. But even when you get right to the end, the, the number is always bigger than this number here, except when S e, n equals 6. That's quite an easy calculation. So, for example, um, if n is even, the number is going to be n, n minus 1 down to times 1 divided by n over 2 factorial times 2 to the n over 2. And it's an easy estimate that I'm feeling too late to do to show that this is bigger than n times n minus 1 over 2 if n is greater than 6. So that shows that the outer automorphism of S6 has order at most 2, and we've shown it as order at least 2, so it has order 2. And it shows that the outer automorphism groups of all other symmetric groups are just 1. Um, so, so that completes the description of the outer automorphism groups of S6. Uh, next lecture, we're going to stop looking at finite groups quite so much and discuss free groups.